there, music lovers, and welcome back to the Woodshed. Had a fantastic weekend playing some rock and roll music with my brother in arms, Mr. Ben Eller, and the boys from Skank Banger, repping the tour hoodie. Real nice, real nice, Clark. Real nice. So with us rocking out this weekend, uh, it was great to see some friendly faces. Always uh, appreciative to everyone who comes out and packs out those venues for the shows. They're a lot of fun. Also, great to see our Woodshed Patreon family out there at those shows. Love seeing you guys out talking guitar with you. It's always a delight. Speaking of talking guitar, one of the things that came to mind in conversations throughout the week is how to understand intervals across the fretboard, chords and melodies all working together. Now with that, there's just one simple solution, and that's listen. You gotta listen to the music. All right, guys, so what I mean by that is when you have a song that you love, and regardless of genre, right, it can be Guns N' Roses or it can be uh, Bob Seger. A lot of times what happens is when we look up how to play songs, whether you go to uh, a guitar player's YouTube channel or, or maybe you're looking at tabs or transcriptions, a lot of times when you're looking up how to play songs, it only addresses the guitar part, right? So like if you look up, you know, Sweet Child of Mine, you're only going to see, you know, this thing. Um, right, you only see that main part. Now, unfortunately, that's like only getting one little piece of the puzzle. Like a tune like Sweet Child of Mine, uh, you know, you want to have... Right? You want to have all those parts going. So how do you get that to connect in your playing? What's the benefit of it? Well, first off, the benefit is you're understanding all of the parts of the song, not just the guitar player's licks, right? You're, you're getting a, a grasp on the melody, how it functions over the chords, and how it changes those chords sound, like, right? Like, so like in Sweet Child of Mine, you have that D to C. But when we play that C chord, we have these interesting melodies. I mean, that's a really cool sound. That's that, like, C Lydian kind of thing. And that's happening in there. Now, I'm sure that when they were thinking and constructing this song, I don't think they were like, you know what would be cool is a C Lydian sound. They were focusing on the melody first, right? And that's where you as a guitar player, as a musician, it's really beneficial to just take a step back from those tablatures, take your nose out of the guitar solo, dare I say, take away, step away from the guitar solo, and then look at how the song is crafted and how everything works together. What we're going to do is take a look at listen to the music, I'm going to show you how I came up with a nice little simple arrangement of that tune uh, where you can hear the chords traveling, you get the vibe of the tune, you're getting the melody that the singer sings, and it feels like the tune is a complete thought even though it's just a single guitar. Now a lot of guys have taken this kind of thing and just ran with it. If you want to see some of this at like expert level, I would definitely check out Tommy Emanuel. He's fabulous at this. Uh, Chet Atkins, you know, classic. Uh, a ranger kind of thing, Lenny Bro, Ted Green, and out of the new school kids, man, props to Mike Doss, man. We we had Mike on the woodshed, and he is fabulous, man. Scope his version of Metallica tunes, John Mayer tunes. Uh, he did Jump. It was awesome, so check that out. These guys really get what it means to create a complete arrangement for guitar where you don't feel like you're missing something. I, I, I wasn't gifted with a beautiful singing voice, right? My singing sucks. So what I wanted to do when I sit down and play the guitar, whether I've got friends over or just hanging out or noodling around on a bus on tour, I want to be able to play the points of the song that people recognize and have fun jamming and, and get back to where music is a fun thing and it's not a chore and you're not just trying to memorize all these tabs for all these licks. Like all of this stuff will make learning songs and learning those intricate solos so much easier when you just have those fundamentals of intervals. All right, let's dig into it. So take the melody line, right? So I, I, I'm sure a lot of you guys probably even played this song out, like a lot of club gigs or whatever. But, uh, you know, when you have that intro, that's kind of the part that everybody learned. <laughs> right? When you go to maybe explore this, you start looking at like the thirds. Because that's where the melody lives, right? And 
And to me, when I'm doing that, I'm not just looking. And when I say I th when I say third, what I mean is like here's the root, here's the root, here's the root, and I find all the roots all over the neck, right? We're in the key of E, and then so I find that third because that's where the melody line starts, right? So instead of just finding it in my chord shape, which would be in my first finger here, I want to find it playing the guitar long ways, breaking out of these like boxes and these little shapes that live that we get into this, this like cage thing, right? You know, where you're like playing everything like up in these like squares and then stopping, disconnecting, playing in a square, stopping, disconnecting, playing another. You end up having like dead space where you don't really know how to connect the guitar. So let's just do something real quick. Let's take that one, three on that same string and I'm gonna play the bass note on the bottom so you can hear it. I'm gonna take that five up here, right? And then we got, you know, five, six, major seven, one. So look at the distance that you can go from just one, three, five. Look how much neck that takes up, right? And that's just like going, or, so like, instead of playing again in these boxes, find that melody line that the singer's singing and try to emulate that by traveling the distance of the neck instead of the distance of the strings, like traveling up and down, like travel left and right, you know. Okay, and the next step would be finding that melody somewhere else, maybe. Let's find it another spot. Let's drop down to another root. Uh, I don't know, right by here. Find another one. Okay, so once you get used to like saying, okay, root, and then the third is two whole steps away, right? Now you can start really having some fun with looking at the intervals that surround it. Maybe adding some harmony, right? So let's take the one we were playing down here. Let's take, uh, if that's our third, we could take that fifth. And look at that. So I'm not, I'm not flying blind, or I'm trying not to fly blind, when I'm looking for harmony notes. The notes that aren't my roots, my buddy Travis Steele player, he always says roots are for trees, right? So when I think about where these roots are, I'm trying to find the harmony notes that go around it. And I'm also doing that while playing the melody line, which is the third, right? So there's, there's five of the chord. And as I walk that down, I'm basically playing the E major scale on every string individually. For instance, my first note in the E major scale on the D string is not E, believe it or not, it's the seventh. So it goes seven, one, two, three, right? And then on the G, it goes three, four, five, and then there's six, right? So, so on and so forth. Now the next thing, the next layer of something like this outside of just getting that melody in your head, the next layer would be finding a place to put it on the neck. Uh, I talk about this to students all the time. Isn't it nice when you go into a room, maybe your holiday season, or you know, you're just going into a guitar store, and instead of playing licks, you're able to play just some melodies and some tunes, and it just it's more engaging, right? Playing songs. It always goes back to that, listen to the music. That's why I chose this song to talk about in this episode. Uh, you know, I also make the joke that like if you have all of the uh, infinity stones of guitar, <laughs> you got rhythm, chops, you know, tone, whatever. At some point, what are you gonna do when you snap your fingers? You gotta play music, right? You gotta have a musical statement. Listen to the music. So the next thing would be finding that melody, and then our harmony. Now we want to find it in a place on the neck that feels good to where we can keep some bass notes rolling. And usually when things get a little claustrophobic, you know, you got too many notes all living on these bottom three strings, three or four strings. I jump it up here to our rock, rock E. Right, rock and roll E. And I'll take it and I'll stack it a little taller. So I have root and then fifth, there's my power chord. 
And I'll put that third on top. Remember how I said finding that melody line somewhere else on the guitar is really helpful. Now let's put that fifth on the bottom. See how the fingers stay nice and neat together? So I'm playing the third with my middle finger and I'm playing the root up here. And if you want to be slick and you can jump down and actually form out that full E chord, right? And now we would take the next part of the melody line. You know, the day by day, I think is the lyric. Uh, right? And that it's funny, that melody line, I can hear that. That's almost the little river band thing. Like that, that same kind of melody, right? Same, same era. So if you notice in the, in the original intro, I think I slide, I think I'm using some root stuff and kind of being a little more ghost-esque with that low string. But the point is, is I'm seeing the melody line work on the D and the B strings, right? So the D strings carrying the harmony and that B strings carrying the melody. Three, two, one. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna play that day by day line, and that's just walking up the scale, you know. So when you're carrying a lot of things harmonically, you're carrying the chords, you're carrying some rhythm, you have to kind of pick and choose on how accurate you can be with the melody because you've only got, you know, at most six voicings that you can play and you've got to kind of manage whether you're playing, you know, finger style or using a pick and some hybrid stuff. Again, like that's how I'm kind of getting, leaving that G string out of it. until I get to that B note in my first finger. Yeah. Right. And this is an in interesting section right here. Uh, we're gonna walk down from this six minor chord, which is C sharp minor. And the scale from C sharp minor is your major scale as well, right? So like just playing an E major scale over that C sharp minor is gonna be just fine. We're gonna play the, you know, Summer Happy. And then I pull off with these two fingers. And I'm outlining that B. So I'm trying to not jump around in chords. I'm trying to play everything in, in as much of one area as I can. Again, so here's the B that we would mostly recognize. We might play this B. Or we would jump up here. But reality is, is we need that bottom note to kind of give us some, some meat, right? It's just a solo arrangement. And then this next chord is really, really cool. Again, looking at the melody. No. That's what the singer sings, right? Just an approximation, right? So... And that's, a, that's kind of an odd stretch. I'm laying off of the A string, and I'm just kind of grabbing, I'm kind of choosing the strings, right? So I got the low string and the two, three middle strings. Playing that. It all comes back to that melody, right? And now this next chord's my favorite, where he sings this a with a raised fourth kind of sound. Right? And that chord, you could hear maybe in Zeppelin, and Steve Vai, Satriani, maybe some of my music, right? That's that Lydian, classic Lydian sound. But it's not used, um, in, this ex in this example, uh, it's not used as a, as a mainstay to create a Lydian droning thing, right? It's just used because you're playing an E major scale over top of that A chord. That's why it doesn't sound exotic 
and listen to the music, but it may sound exotic in maybe a Satriani tune. It's the function of the sound, right? So again, you've got to listen to the music, right? I, I'm, I'm going to be just be as cliche as possible when I'm teaching this. Uh, it's, it's that melody that, that the guitar player is not even really playing this. Uh, the guitar player is just playing an A chord, just a basic A chord, right? And that singer's singing that. So when you're combining all of this stuff into one instrument to make an arrangement with a piano or guitar or whatever, you've got to acknowledge all these different parts of the song, right? So let's work up what we've got so far. I play an open E. And this is where you can play what he sings, but I like to play a little hot lick right there. And in the intro, I play this little triplet thing, very kind of Brent Mason. Walking up on that root, and then uh, five, six, one. And that's a great point in an arrangement, you know, when you have a rest and a turnaround and you're at the end of a verse or at the halfway point of a verse, you can play something hot. You know, whatever you might have that's like a, just a classic bluesy thing. And then back to that main riff. Now we're going to play the same verse again. There's that tricky move, right? And then we get to the chorus. If you want to learn the chorus, uh, jump over to my Patreon. I'll teach the rest of the chorus over there. The uh, it's not really that hard. It's not anything you guys can't figure out uh, with what I'm teaching you. I think it's important that here I'm more trying to teach you to fish for yourself instead of just giving you fish, right? Like the idea is that you can find that melody line. And figure out how to put the chord with it. That's just C sharp minor. I'm playing a C sharp minor seventh, but I mean, that's just like, just for color. And then I'm putting that, that A, All right? And that's how I'm doing it. I'm looking, I'm breaking everything down to a basic melody. Start with the singer, okay? That's my thing. Find a song that you love, man. It can be anything. It can be a, and where's the melody start, right? And then when you find that melody, you find it in other places. And then you start telling yourself what intervals you're identifying. And that can apply to any song, regardless of genre. And it'll help your ears and your hands kind of connect. And in turn, you, you know, you hope that you're playing improves, which I'm pretty sure it will. Again, in closing, here, my advice to you is find songs that you love find that singer's melody line and learn that what that singer's singing on the guitar and then start putting the chords around it. You know, really great stuff, man. You can have eagles, you know, uh, uh, there's some great stuff in there. And then, I mean, what's another great one that I've been listening to lately? Uh, like, these are just songs that I love. For those that don't know, that's a little bit of Elton John being the Jets. And, and it goes all the way to hard rock and metal and all the genres that you love. Learn 
what those singers are singing, how it works with the chords that the guitar player is playing and the bass player, and then start combining those elements together, right? Like you can do this with anything, like Smashing Pumpkins, Foo Fighters, it really doesn't matter. And you're just trying to get things to glue together to help you understand inner valley knowledge across the fretboard and improve your playing. It's just as simple as having, having fun with the stuff that you already love, all right? Cheers. Okay, thanks for hanging out this week in the woodshed. I really appreciate you guys. Please do me a favor, jump over to Andy Wood Music, sign up for that newsletter. In today's era, Instagram and all these platforms could just turn off. Like, like they crash sometimes, right? Like the metaverse is still in its infancy. So what I would like to do is be able to get in touch with you guys. That way you can know my tour schedule. Uh, you know, you see offers that I've got going on, whether it be the Axfex patches or, or lessons or whatever. You see, come see me and Uncle Ben with Skankbanger. That is at andywoodmusic.com. Just sign up for that email list and maybe take a browse around, see some mu music videos and listen to some tunes, whatever. If you're really looking to get deeper into your guitar playing and you want to join our community, which has grown to be something really, really special, jump over to patreon.com slash andywoodmusic. We've got a Discord server just for sharing ideas, pictures of your guitars and gear and all that stuff. You can share your transcriptions with each other videos, all of that kind of nerd stuff that is so much fun. It's a great community. And then on Wednesday nights, usually on Wednesday nights, we do a live masterclass uh, that's all accessible from patreon.com slash andywoodmusic. And then, of course, for our monster members, there are a lot of benefits, one of which is a 30-minute lesson with me. All this stuff's done through Zoom. So uh, when I'm on tour or whatever, we still have access to all of it. So fear not, fret not. Uh, no pun intended. But yeah, if you're wanting to hang out and join the community, andywoodmusic.com, sign up for that email list, and then patreon.com slash andywoodmusic will help you help me keep all this stuff rolling. I appreciate you guys, and we will see you next week.